tying up another Carrie Stevens streamer pattern today. This is called the Alley's Delight. This is named after a friend of hers, Albert French. The other one that was she tied was Alley's Favorite that was also named after him. The Alley's Delight is a little less, less well-known streamer pattern that she did. And apparently she, any of these that she tied, I guess maybe she just tied them for him personally. Uh, it got listed in her somewhere in patterns that she has tied and everything, but there were no flies with her signature on them. Often when she tied and sold them on the card that the fly was on would be her signature. So finding any of these were, that were actually tied by Carrie Stevens is pretty rare. That's a nice little fall bait fish pattern. Interesting, attractive pattern. Straightforward to tie as far as the Carrie Stevens patterns. That's the Alley Delight. I'll get started tying. start the Alley's Delight with my hook on the vise. This is a Partridge CS5. It is a 9x long streamer hook. This is a size 4. Not quite as heavy as the CS15. I'm going to go ahead and debarb the hook. For thread, I'm going to start out with a UTC 140 denier in black. Now the body is a flat silver tinsel on this, but it does have a yellow tail in it. So I'm gonna start my thread maybe about three quarters down the hook shank. Just getting my thread attached here. I'm going to trim away the excess. For tinsel, I'm using a Danville size 12 silver and gold Mylar tinsel. I'm going to tie this in with the gold side up. I'm going to wrap this down to pass probably a halfway between the point and the barb of the hook. And I'm going to wrap back forward, not quite to where I tied it in. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of head cement on here. And that is going to help to reinforce that a little bit. And then I will apply the tag. You do want to try and minimize any bumps back here with the tail material. You're going to have some and the tinsel body. There's no way around it. For the tail, it's just a yellow hackle fibers. You could use a schloppen if you want a nice soft hackle. I'm using a rooster cape, so it's a little bit stiffer, a little sparser. I'm going to get these about 90 degrees out from the rachis. Pulling those off, I actually get a little bit from both sides so that it's a little bit thicker. Again, you don't want to have it too thick because you risk creating too much of a bump back in the middle. This simply adds a little bit of color to the back. The thicker curlies. You know, when you strip these barbs off the rake as this keratin right here, you get these little curlies right here. I'm going to trim those a little bit of an angle, trying to, again, minimize any little bump. I tie these in so these stick out the back past the bend about three quarters, no, not three quarters, three eighths to half an inch or so. 
wrapping rearward just a little bit. Now I'm going to tie in the tinsel for the body. Again, it's the same number 12 Mylar silver and gold tinsel. I will tie that in and pull the tip, I should say the tag end, back to the back here. I don't have to be as concerned. Actually, I forgot this one. I'm going to do a different technique. I'm going to do a double layered body. I wanted to demonstrate that. So now I'm going to wrap forward. I'm actually going to come back just a little bit, trying to smooth that out. Again, you're going to have some bulk back here, so there are ways to try and minimize that a little bit instead of having an abrupt bump back there. Flatten my thread here. This will help me get from one end to the other a little bit quicker. There's a couple of ways you can put this body in. It's a silver tinsel. You can put a single layer in if you want, which is what I started to do. And I have done on some recent flies. But you could also do a double layered body. And I've done this on some others as well. But a double layer has the advantage of covering up any gaps not having to be as concerned about a nice smooth body here. Same tinsel, you want to make certain you've got a good 12, probably 10 to 12 inches. The one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the very end of this at a nice abrupt angle. I'm sorry, not abrupt, a nice sloped angle. This allows me to tie in the end of that tinsel right along the hook, wrapping forward just a little, and I get enough in there that it won't pull out. Holding that back just a little, I'm going to put some head cement all along the thread wraps here. That is, again, going to help secure that tinsel to the thread in case of a fish or a rock or something nicking that tinsel in it coming off. Now, I tied that in with the silver side up because I can bring this down and around and that silver side pops right up. That little bump there can be pushed down and it will get covered up in a minute. Now I'm going to put a nice edge to edge wraps all the way down and back up and you'll see if I miss it and I get any gaps or any bumps or anything, that other layer can help to fill that in, cover that up, mask it up, and the whole thing looks just a little smoother. Anchoring that down well within the head space, so anything, if that's a little bumpy or a little sloppy or whatever, that's going to get covered up. 
and you'll notice usually back in the back here when you're having to deal with this extra bulk as well as an angle change notice as you're wrapping it down you're keeping it at an angle like this you're going to have to wrap it straight down here at the back and then you're going to have to change angles oftentimes i've got just a little bit of a bump in the tinsel right down here i don't know if you can see it or not but sometimes you get those you just want to take that um that change that angle change just Nice and slow, put an extra wrap or two in to help mitigate that, and then you get a nice smooth body. So there's the body, the tail, and the tag on Alley's Delight. The head on the Alley's Delight is black with an orange band. I have used the Uni Thread 80 in orange as well as the uh, Danville 6 aught in fluorescent orange. The only one that I found is a Danville 3 aught that's in a nice, kind of not muted, but less bright orange. As the fluorescent in the UTC or the Danville uh, 6 aught is a more of a fluorescent color. And the, the 8 aught in the Uni has a little more red in it than I care for. So I am started to use this 3 aught Danville monochord, and it works pretty well. The only thing you have to be careful of as in most fly tying, watch your thread wraps. Don't put in a lot of unnecessary thread wraps to hold things in. And if you are going to put in a number of thread wraps, make certain that they're going in to help smooth off or cover up. It just doesn't, you don't want it to get excessive. Now it's time for the belly and the belly is just some white bucktail. I've already selected some. I've got the tips fairly even back here, and then you're going to measure those. I want those to be about the same length as the tail. Holding those underneath, a little pinch wrap underneath, and bind those in. Sometimes, like you can see right here, the torque on the thread as I'm wrapping that around has kind of pulled the whole clump where I've tied it in off to the side. Keep that in mind because all I have to do before I cut that and, and finish binding it all in is just push it back down to the underside. Then I can cut all of this extra. And you can turn your hook over if this is more comfortable for you working this way. Then I can bind all of this in and now I don't have to worry about it rotating at all. The throat on the alley's delight is some yellow. I'm using a yellow schloppen for this. I've got three clumps set aside. I'm going to tie the first one in so it goes down about halfway down the shank length. And this is just like in many of the other flies that I've done uh, in the last few months. If you look at some of the others, the uh, Orange Miller was uh, one of the more recent ones that I did. A lot of these throats are all tied in the same way. The belly's the same way. Little differences in the body. I did the others. I think it was the Orange Miller that had a tinsel body as well. And I did that in just a single layer. Maybe it was the Pink Beauty. Anyway. I wanted to show today what it would look like doing a double layer. So I get all three clumps in, one on the bottom, two on the sides. I think part of the reason that she did this was to help cover up any black thread wraps or anything like that and make it look a little bit more uniform but I had a person on YouTube commented this last week that the other advantage and this may be actually why Carrie Stevens did this but the other advantage is that having that wide 
a wider head with the slopping on both sides gives you more of a platform for tying in the wings. So that may be ultimately why she did it. I don't know. So that's tied in. There is, she marks it out in her recipe, or I should say the Hilliards did in the recipes in their book. They include the peacock curl as part of the wing. Other people will usually include it as what's called an underwing. And it's four to six strands. You want to get the tips of those pretty much even. They don't have to be perfect. But you get those evened up, and they're going to be as long as the tail. And I just point that out because you will see some people's recipes where they call it a, an underwing, and hers, or at least in the book, it has it as part of the wing. I can get these fairly even. Again, they don't have to be perfect. But they can and will get busted up as you're fishing them. Tie that right up on top. And trim away the excess. These, these ends, by the way, this is just some strung peacock curl. If you're doing any small trout nymphs or even some bluegill flies or um, trying to think like a pheasant tail nymph or something that has a few wraps of peacock curl or even a peacock curl case like a, a blouser swimming nymph, these bits and pieces are perfect for that because you don't have to have nice clean tips to it. You're using this part of it right here. So if these are long enough, you might set a little bag aside and keep those or you might not. Start a remnant box. There you go. Start putting all that away so you can start tying some remnant flies with it. So, body is complete. We're ready for the wing. The wing is some white hackles flanked by one grizzly, natural grizzly hackle. I have two white hackles in here flanked by one grizzly hackle and a cheek of jungle cock. The recipe in the book com, uh, didn't comment, I should say. It, it called for the peacock curl and then two white hackles and one grizzly hackle on the outside. I wasn't certain if that meant like two hackles for one side and one grizzly hackle or one white hackle for each side and then the grizzly hackle on the outside. Not certain how, how to read that just yet, but I put two on the inside and one grizzly on the outside. If you haven't seen the video yet on how I pre-process these, there will be a link down in the description. It's worth a, a look-see. I'll put the one on my side on first. I just want to make certain that I have it on in position. It is vertical on the side. It's not cocked off to one side or anything. And then I'll get the one over on the other side. Here I generally am looking for making certain that the tips are evened up. Because I can always trim this back a little bit. Let's see that broader head with the slop and tied on the outside gives you a nice nicer platform for tying in the the two wings now i will simply clean all of this up smoothing this off making a nice head and by the way if you haven't seen it in any of the other videos i explain why it is I'm using the orange thread here when the head calls for black thread with an orange band. If I were to do this all in black, the problem is when I put that orange band in, the black's going to show through a lot of it. So I'd have to put a lot of orange in there right in the middle to put in that orange band and then end up with kind of a bump that may be desirable or acceptable some. I find it's a lot easier to tie it in with the orange base and then 
we'll use some thinner black, some 6 off black to put in the black bands. We'll finish the orange thread. I'll take my 6 aught Danville in black. Start rearward, binding that tag in. Now you just want to carefully cover up the rear third of the head, at least the rear quarter of the head. If you want a more pronounced band, you could. I think the effort is made to have them all even so you've got about a third that's black a third that's orange and another third that's black make certain you're that's getting to be a little too much it's a little too wide yeah i'll go with it we'll go with that got to make certain that you are getting it covered on all sides here as you can see my far side didn't quite get as covered as well as the near side. Can't see it. Yeah. I'm going to go with it for the sake of the video and timing, but that's a little bit wider than I like. So in the future, I would unwrap that and get that a little bit narrower. I'll make the front a little bit narrower. Now there's only a clear lacquer that's going on top of this. So if you have any of that orange showing through in the black, then it will show through. As a fishing fly, I don't think that that's an issue myself. And as a fishing fly, I also don't think it's an issue in terms of having a narrower, broader orange band on this. But in terms of the aesthetics of framing this and everything, having a little spot of orange on one side may not be the best, unless it's on the side that is next to the frame and not to be seen. So keep that in mind too. Attaching the thread to the front here. Trim away the excess. Same thing. Putting some thread wraps on to cover that all up. Tidy that up a little bit. Run my thread down here. There you go. That worked out pretty well, actually. But maybe I was right all along. I'm going to flatten my thread out. Get a five or turn lip finish, five or six turn lip finish on here. A little head cement. I'll come back and put some clear lacquer on that and our alley's delight will be done. As I mentioned before, I think I mentioned before, listed in the Hilliard book as kind of a fall pattern, not a well-known one, but I could see why. I mean, this is looks just like a wonderful little fall bait fish pattern, a couple of inches long, at least around here in the Midwest. The fall smallmouth are targeting uh, bait fish that are one and a half to two inches long and uh, this would be an excellent fly. So, that's the alley's delight. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern 
if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. Thank you.